hey, what the hell's going on? What's happening with you and your and the thing, and the face? There's a wait. Watch out for the the thing that's fallen down near your head. You don't want to bust your face open because you look at you. Hello, I'm Nick Digilio. Thank you for checking. I have no idea how to say hello normally, so look at you and your face and your ear. Anyway, I'm Nick Digilio. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. Uh, and uh, more importantly, check out my Patreon page. That's the real important deal. You'll see a lot of these videos on my Patreon page and a lot of exclusive videos that nobody else can see. Lots of bonus uh, footage and bonus material and the bonus content that only patrons can get. And that means you got to donate a little dough. Help me out. Help me uh, continue doing all this other stuff and the videos and the podcast and all that cool stuff. So any little bit can help. Pick a tier, three bucks, six bucks, 25 bucks a month, whatever you want. Uh, every little bit helps. Monthly donation keeps everything going. So please, patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Go there right now. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Donate dough. It'll help me out a lot. Do it. Thank you. Enjoy the veal and enjoy bonus content that nobody else gets. So, patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Donate. Podcast every Tuesday, every Friday. New Radio Misfits Podcast Network. All right. So I went to a couple of um, of uh, critic screenings, uh, press screenings uh, yesterday. Um, I was away from the press screening world uh, for a while uh, because after I lost my gig at WGN, uh, went through a year and a half of uh, nonsense in my life, uh, got my shit back together, started doing these videos, started writing, started my podcast, and now I'm back. I, I rejoined the Chicago Film Critics uh, Association. I am now back with the Chicago Film Critics Association. I am now back being a professional film critic as I had done for 35 years. And now I'm back and I'm doing all that kind of stuff. And 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 thankfully and very uh, uh, happily, uh, uh, all the PR people uh, in the city of Chicago welcome me back with open arms and are inviting me to press screenings so that I can review them here on the intranet writing about them, and especially on my podcast, the Nick D Podcast, every Tuesday and Friday, new episodes, radiomisfits.com. So I'm now back doing, I'm back in the circuit, I'm back in the screening room with all the critics and, uh, and all that stuff and all my old compadres and colleagues that I haven't seen in a long time, and we're all back watching movies. And we did that yesterday, we saw two movies yesterday, one of which doesn't open for uh, a couple of weeks, so I'm not going to talk about it. There's a, you know, they, 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 they tell you not to talk about it until it opens so the movie that we saw yesterday i saw two movies yesterday the first one we saw doesn't open until april 22nd so as we get closer to that release date i will tell you about it i won't tell you what it was but i will tell you this it was fucking great that's all i'm gonna say it was great um and uh i personally think that at the end of the year it will be on my top 10 list at the end of the year but the second one was not the second one in fact was a piece of shit the second one was a Michael Bay movie. So that kind of goes without saying. When you say Michael Bay movie, that's kind of synonymous with piece of shit. It's it's this you can use that. Like if you're if you're thinking of a replacement for the phrase piece of shit, like oh man, that person, what a jerk. What that person's a piece of shit. You could just say instead, you could say that person is a Michael Bay movie. So you could easily, if you don't want to swear, if you're in mixed company, or if some jag off is offended by bad fucking language, then you could just say Michael Bay movie. So instead of piece of shit, hey, that dog, look at what he left behind on the ground there. It's a Michael Bay movie. You know? Wow, I'm going to flush the toilet, but man, that's a pretty impressive looking Michael Bay movie in the toilet. So piece of shit equals Michael Bay movie. Michael Bay movie equals piece of shit. And yesterday I saw Ambulance, which is the latest Michael Bay movie. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yes, it's a synonym for piece of shit. Yes! So, the latest Michael Bay movie, and then when I'm done talking about Ambulance, which, please do not get it confused with the extraordinarily entertaining uh, Larry Cohen movie, uh, written movie, from about, I don't know, 30 years ago with, with Eric Roberts. Please do not get those two confused because... That ambulance is not a Michael Bay movie, meaning it's not a piece of shit. It's actually 
A lot of fun, great exploitation movie. The great Larry Cohen wrote it, for God's sake. And Eric Roberts, at the height of his early 90s insanity, um, is fantastic in it. So don't get it confused. Ambulance, that ambulance is good. This ambulance is a Pete, a Michael Bay movie. And I'll tell you, and I'm going to go down the filmography of Michael Bay. It's astonishing at how many Michael Bay movies he's made. And you know what Michael Bay movie means, right? You know what that is a synonym of, yes. It's amazing at how many Michael Bay movies Michael Bay has made. It's amazing. Wow. His Michael Bay movies are real, real Michael Bay movies, if you know what I mean. All right, so anyway, Ambulance, latest Michael Bay movie. Uh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is in it in maybe the most embarrassing performance uh, that he's ever given. Now, I happen to be a huge uh, Jake Gyllenhaal fan. I've loved him, and I love him in everything. I think he's terrific. Uh, obviously, I think my phone is sliding down here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Don't fall. It was slowly sliding down. It, I, at some point during the video, I, I believed that I would have had to uh, have been looking like I was doing CPR on you. And oh, like oh no. So anyway, uh, let me get back to the to this thing. So anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, get distracted because you were sliding. You were slip sliding away, Paul. Paul Simon. Anyway, uh, so I like Jake Gyllenhaal. Unfortunately, he's embarrassingly bad in this movie. He's not given much to work with. The script is ridiculous. The guy who wrote the script, I don't even know his name, but I get he uh, he's like a TV guy. He's written a lot of TV stuff. He was the he's the guy who created Chuck. You remember Chuck with. Uh, Fuckheads, Shazam, whatever that... I can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, Chuck, which was not a bad show. But he's the TV guy. Um, and he's written a lot of TV stuff. And so, and he sucks. So anyway, and, in, and by the way, this script is ridiculous. This is really, literally, seriously one of the worst scripts of all time. So uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II is in this movie. Uh, he recently played uh, Morpheus in The Matrix Resurrections. He's in Candyman. He was in Trial of Chicago 7, terrific, as Bobby Seale in that. He was in uh, Jordan Peele's Us, uh, Aquaman, um, and he's done uh, Watchmen, and he's in this movie as well. And in the movie, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen uh, II, they play brothers. Um, and uh, this is very pushed down your throat in the movie. Um, and uh, they were, you know, obviously one of them was adopted and they became brothers and they're real brothers and they talk about their incredible close relationship. So at the beginning of the movie, uh, Mateen II is on the phone trying desperately to talk to his insurance company because his wife needs this major surgery that his insurance is not covering. And we all know what medical bills uh, cost. <laughs> Don't get me started. We all know what hospital and medical bills cost. Uh, and so he's on the phone. Uh, not getting anywhere, and this is a mul you know this is a hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that this operation is going to cost, and uh, obviously the insurance company is fucking him over. It's the man, and they're you know trying to shut him down. So he goes off to his estranged brother, Jake Gyllenhaal, who is this guy who uh, is a rich guy who has a bunch of really cool cars, and who's obviously um, you know a thief, and uh, their father. Um, LT, as they call him in the movie, uh, was a was a was a was a bank robber and a thief and a killer and a maniac and a gangster. And uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is carrying that tradition on. But um, Martin the, the the second is actually a Marine. He served the he served our country. He's trying to live an honest uh, life, earnest uh, honest living, and he can't do it because uh, it's impossible to to live, you know, without having a ton of money, and you can't pay your hospital bills. So he goes back to, to Gyllenhaal and says, I need money, I need $230,000 for this operation. And instead of uh, him loaning the money, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's like, hey, you know, coincidentally, as you walked into here, I'm actually about to do a bank robbery. Come on in. Let's go. Come with us. Like, it was just the timing was amazing when uh, Mateen the second shows up and Gyllenhaal is just about to go and rob a bank. Come on. So he joins him right on the spot and the day and he becomes part of this crew uh, and they're going to rob a bank get like 32 million dollars it'll be easy peasy Jake Gyllenhaal says it's the score he can have a ton of it he'll be able to you know uh, uh, this, this poor guy will be able to pay his bills he'll be able to move he's got a kid the, the wife has a little baby that for some reason is like 
connected to her shoulder during the entire movie. Every scene that this woman is in, she's got a baby. She's got the baby. To let you know that she is a mother who needs financial assistance. Every single scene, I'm not exaggerating. Even at the end of the movie, there's a scene where she runs out of a police car and has the baby. Like, she's carrying the baby. Every scene she has, she's got the baby on her shoulder. Just to let you know, in case you're a fucking moron, just to let you know that she has a kid and they need money. This is her entire performance is defined by her holding a baby. This poor actress, like shaking a baby. That's her entire character. So anyway, um, so anyway, he, he 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 joins this bank robbery, and he's but but the the crew that Jake Gyllenhaal has gotten together are the most inept morons ever. Uh, and so they, the the bank robbery goes wrong. Shit flies all, all over the place. A rookie cop shows up when he was not supposed to show up during the robbery. He gets shot by mistake. Uh, by May the second, and then all says we got to grab this guy, and uh, so they, they they basically then uh, I, the other subplot is that uh, Isaac Gonzalez, who was so great in Baby Driver, uh, she's in Godzilla vs Kong, um, she was in uh, the the Fast and Furious Hobbs and fucking Knobs movie, she's in that she's beautiful, terrific Mexican actress, uh, and she started in Telenovas and things like that, and she's now. She's terrific. I love her. Anyway, she plays an EMT in an ambulance, and it's she's very cynical. At the beginning of the movie, she's trying to save this young girl who's got like a spike through her, her belly and trying to keep her calm, and she does. She she helps this young girl get through this very traumatic event as she's being you know chopped out of a car, a crash, a car crash, and takes her to the hospital. But once the kid goes into the emergency area, she cuts off. Isaac Gonzalez cuts off. Tells her partner, "I don't care about this. This is a day. This is just one day of work for me. I don't care. You know, this is my job. I don't care about what happens to the people afterwards. Blah blah blah." So of course that's going to come back at the end, and she'll learn a lesson. So anyway, this ambulance driver, this EMT, uh, uh, they end up the, the cop, the rookie cop, ends up in the back of her EM of her ambulance, and then just coincidentally, uh, Jill and Hall and Martin show up, and they uh, take the, the ambulance. Uh, they hijack the ambulance. They jump in there, and they're going to leave. You know, as the entire city now is looking for them, uh, FBI, cops, helicopters, motorcycles, cars, every kind of thing in the world, chasing after them. Uh, a, a lot of the manhunt is led by Garrett Dillahunt, who I love. Terrific character actor. He's been in a ton of movies. Assassination of Jesse James, No Country for Old Men. Best remembered probably as the father in Raising Hope. Great, great, great sitcom. Anyway, he's the leader of the guy. He's got a. There's a comedy with a. He's got a dog with him that farts and the, and and, uh, and throws up. And there's a dog and then all all of the wacky, sort of very diehard like, uh, uh, but only not as witty, uh, camaraderie between the FBI and the cops and everybody who's trying to hunt these guys down, turns into a hostage situation. People are killed. Shit blows up. And now they're chasing after the ambulance, and then Jake Gyllenhaal is going to call upon some of his gangster uh, Vato friends that he knows to, to help him get out of the situation, and then that goes awry. People die, cars explode, blah, 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 and it becomes a Michael Bay movie. So will they get out of this? Will, uh, will they be able to, will these two guys uh, get out of this? Will, will uh, Mateen uh, be able to uh, get the money for his wife's operation and all that other stuff? So these are the questions. All right. It is as stupid a movie as you can possibly imagine. The script is ridiculous. The characters beyond one-dimensional. Uh, as I said, all of the authority stuff with the cops, the FBI's, the agents, with the, with, the, with the hostages, with the chases, it's all stolen from other better movies like Dog Day Afternoon and Die Hard and stuff like that. Uh, the script is ridiculous. There are characters in this movie that quote Michael Bay movies. And I'm not exaggerating. The two cops in this movie start the, start their first scene by quoting from The Rock, Sean Connery, as if that's something people do on a regular basis. And then they quote from Bad Boys. Because in Michael Bay's world, the only movies that exist are Michael Bay's movies. Because Michael Bay is an egotistical fucking idiot. And so he has the balls to, to include, like, like, people actually walk around and quote The Rock. Who the fuck quotes The Rock? Who? And if you do, you're an idiot. Who quotes bad boys? Do people walk around quoting bad boys? No. Nobody in the real world does. Only in the world of Michael Bay. 
So anyway, it, uh, uh, Hall is just uh, all the other, all the talented people who are in it. And there's a good, good portion of talented people who are in it are wasted. Gyllenhaal is embarrassing in his performance. Uh, the action is so horribly directed. Cameras are flying all over the place from the top of buildings, swooping down for absolutely no reason. Again, Michael Bay um, proving that he cannot frame, cut, shoot, do anything with action well. He's known as an action director. He's one of the worst action filmmakers that has ever lived. He's one of the worst action directors on the planet. He is a piece of shit. He is a terrible filmmaker. He has zero fucking talent. Zero. He can't tell a story to save his fucking life. He doesn't know how to direct actors. Uh, He doesn't care about the acting or the validity of what's happening or the connection between characters. Doesn't care. Has no idea how to tell a story. And then worse upon that, add that, he makes action movies. He doesn't know how to make action movies. He doesn't know how to shoot them. There is not one scene in any of his fucking movies that's well done. The only movie that he's ever made that isn't terrible is The Rock, and that's because of the cast. That's because he had a great cast in that movie, and it wasn't a terrible script. He tried to fuck it up, however, because he has no idea how to shoot and cut action. He has no idea how to do that. He's made his living as a big-budget, crazy, crazy, over-the-top, special effects, explosive action director. And guess what? He's got zero fucking ability in that department. He's one of the worst filmmakers to ever live. Ever. And uh, the ego on this guy, the way that he treats people on set, the insane shit that he said and done on sets, how he handles his actors, how he handles the, 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 the production of a movie and then the release of a movie, he is an asshole. He is an A1, number one fucking asshole. And yes, there are a lot of asshole filmmakers out there. Kubrick was an asshole. Hitchcock was an asshole. But you know what? They were great filmmakers. Bay is an asshole who couldn't direct traffic. He's one of the worst filmmakers that's ever lived, ever. Fuck him and fuck his movies. Anyway, Ambulance is terrible. The script is ridiculous. Now, there are moments in the movie that could have worked in the hands of an actual filmmaker, of a person who knows how to make a movie. Michael Bay does not. So, um, there's a scene in the movie in particular where they have to, the EMT, assisted by Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, has to, the cop is dying. The cop who's been shot is dying. And so, uh, with the assistance of, like, you know, on a Zoom call, on some phones and some laptops, of some surgeons who are golfing, there are some surgeons out there golfing, and they get a hold of them to help her to walk her through this operation that she has to do. She has to do a splenectomy in the back of an ambulance at one point in this movie, helped by golfing doctors. This is how brilliant the script is. It's they have the doctors on a golf course because, you know, that's not a cliche. And there's like a ton. I don't even want to get into the stereotypes in terms of racial stereotypes uh, uh, in this movie because it's unbelievable. In terms of ethnic stereotypes, seriously, it's fucking unbelievable. I'm uh, half Italian, and I was actually offended by the Italian guy in this movie. And it takes a lot for me to be offended by Italian stereotypes. I wasn't offended. I just was like, man, what, a, what is this, 1977? the fuck is this and the racial stereotypes the ethnic stereotypes the female stereotypes the male the 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 the, the script is nothing but one-dimensional stereotypical bullshit written by a six-year-old and directed by a no-talent fuckhead so anyway during this scene where they have to do this operation a lot of crazy shit happens she has her hand buried inside this guy's gut inside the cop's gut like deep in no idea getting coaching from guys on you know TV screens and shit helping her out or or, uh, phone screens and she's got her hands blood shooting out of the place now that scene while they're going like 60 miles an hour in the in the back of the ambulance while they're going 60 miles an hour cops helicopters chasing them she's got her hands inside this guy's guts Jake Gyllenhaal's trying to help out and so it's a scene that could have worked in the hands of a director who actually knows what he's doing uh it could have worked uh, it's, it could have been really funny, it could have been really outrageous, and it could have been handled beautifully. It's a, The idea of doing a splenectomy in the back of a speeding ambulance by uh, an EMT who has no uh, uh, surgery experience and by a bank robber trying to help out a cop, That in it, at, at its core, it's a great idea. And the scene could have been great. It could have been hilarious, and it could have been surreal, and it could have been really scary and tense. And, of course, it, none of it works because... Michael Bay couldn't frame or cut, or this is a Michael Bay movie. That's your Michael Bay movie. 
So a scene where someone's doing a splenectomy in the back of an ambulance, a scene that has so much potential to be great and surreal and hilarious, fucking bombs. Anyway, when the movie's over, it's all fucking stupid. Nobody cares. Um, it is your typical, horrible, pretentiously shot, awful Michael Bay movie. It's shit, so don't see Ambulance. It's shit. Now, let's go back through the pieces of shit, or the Michael Bay movies, shall we? All right, let's begin with Bad Boys from 1995. Uh, Will Smith. Ooh. Have we heard about him recently in the news? Not sure. Anyway, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, you know the movie. It's shit. So that was his first movie. The Rock was his second movie, 1996. And that's the only movie that he's made that I've actually uh, enjoyed. Didn't love it. I like it. Has nothing to do with Michael Bay's direction because he sucks. Uh, it, it's a, it was a clever script. The thing about The Rock was that it had a great cast. He had a great cast in that movie who probably didn't listen to any of his direction or lack of direction that he gave them for acting. I'm sure that Sean Connery went, shut up and go stand over there by your camera, asshole. That's my Michael. That's my Sean Connery. Anyway, uh, so, you know, Ed Harris probably told him to fuck off. You know. All right, Armageddon was after that. Piece of shit. I know people like Armageddon. Well, you're wrong. It is a piece of shit. Uh... I mean, we all know it. And, it, and also we should blame his ass for that fucking terrible Aerosmith song, one of the worst songs ever. So I blame him for that, too. By the way, he directed a bunch of videos, too. That's how he got his start, Michael Bay. <laughs> you know, yeah, including Sticks videos. Uh, Armageddon, okay, Pearl Harbor. Do we even need to talk about Pearl Harbor? I mean, embarrassing, embarrassing. But by this point, Michael Bay's ego had blown up. You know, like after Armageddon, you know, uh, it was like he became the Michael Bay that we all know now. The egotistical, maniacal, maniac fuckhead who treats actors and actresses like shit, who thinks he's the king of the world, and is a terrible fucking director. So Pearl Harbor, Bad Boys 2, one of the worst movies ever made. I, I know I'm prone to hyperbole, but this is truly, Bad Boys 2 is one of the worst movies ever made with absolutely nothing but contempt for its audience. It has the fucking balls to be two hours and 37 minutes long. It's two hours and 37 minutes long. A Will Smith, Martin Lawrence fucking cop movie is two hours and 37 minutes long. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, and it has nothing but fucking contempt for its audience. That's the key of a Michael Bay movie. He hates his audience. He has nothing but contempt for his fucking audience. He thinks he can do anything to his audience, and they will take it. And for a while there, they did. For a while, people were like, oh, yeah, give me more shit which encouraged Michael Bay to continue making shit and treating his audience like garbage. Michael Bay thinks you're a fucking idiot. Michael Bay hates you. If you're an audience of a Michael Bay movie, guess what? He has nothing but contempt for you. You want proof of that? Try watching an hour of Bad Boys 2. Uh, the Island, uh, a terrible, ridiculous science fiction movie. Awful script, terribly directed. He gets two terrific actors like uh, Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson and wastes them. Uh, the only thing they cared about in, the, in this movie, Scarlett Johansson in a very tight, you know, uh, uh, jumpsuit in this movie. He cared about, like, how great and hot Scarlett Johansson looked in the movie. Uh, as a piece of science fiction, it's absurd and ridiculous and terrible. As action, it doesn't work because it's Michael Bay. It's bullshit. Uh, the Island. All right, Transformers. The first of, like, I don't know how many Transformers movies this guy's made. The Transformers movies are fucking garbage. They're shit. They're stupid. They're incomprehensible. Uh, uh, everybody in it is wasted. Again, he gets a great cast. It gives them nothing to do. The scripts are fucking horrible. And the way he handles the action and the special effects, visually just a mess. You can't see what's happening. The way he cuts it, the way he shoots it. The Transformer movies are all fucking garbage. They're shit. They've made millions and millions of dollars. I don't give a shit if you had the toys. I don't care if you like the cartoons. If you like the Transformers movies, you're a moron. They're garbage. They are the epitome of big budget shit. They are crap. He made Transformers, then he made Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and then Dark of the Moon, and then he, uh, Age of Extinction, and Last Night. Uh, all of them sucked. When Shia LaBeouf was like... When Shia LaBeouf had had it and left, he brings Mark Wahlberg in, who, who, who clearly... Mark Wahlberg doesn't give a... F I like Mark Wahlberg in a lot of movies, and I love him in a lot of movies, especially the other guys. He's hilarious in that. Mark Wahlberg will say yes to anything. And he just went back and, like... So the Transformers movies, I guess he's made six of them. I stopped after the third one. I can't even... I won't even not be... I, I'll admit, the, the, uh, the, the, the Mark Wahlberg ones, haven't seen them. Don't care to see them. You know why? Because they're shit. I already know that. 
So he's made all the Transformer movies. They suck. Pain and Gain. A little, uh, you know, he's, he goes a little bit off on that one. It's a little bit different than some of the stuff that he's done before. It's kind of a comedy. You know what? It's shit. Okay? Uh, Pain and Gain. Uh, 13 Hours, um, which was a war movie uh, 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 that he that he made. It was his, his attempt at Catherine Bigelow. Like he was trying to do uh, a serious examination of real military uh, things. Uh, John Krasinski was in it and a, a bunch of other miscast people. It's a piece of shit. He was trying to be serious. He was trying to be Catherine Bigelow. And his attempt to be Catherine Bigelow is hilarious because, I mean, Michael Bay... Catherine Bigelow, in the same sentence? No. One's a real filmmaker, one's a fucking joke. Uh, 13 Hours, and then, uh, you know, he did another Transformer movie and all that other shit. And then he did Six Underground with Ryan, Re Ryan Reynolds, who was perfect to team up with, because I hate Ryan Reynolds. Fuck Ryan Reynolds. Fuck the Deadpool movies. I fucking hate Ryan Reynolds. I can't stand him. Smarmy, smirky fuckhead. I can't stand Ryan Reynolds. And so he's perfect. He's a perfect guy to team up with for, uh, for Michael Bay. And then that brings us to Ambulance, which is his first movie on the big screen in, pro I think it's seven years, six years, something like that, because the last one he did was for uh, Netflix. So this is like his big return. And again, Ambulance is, uh, as I mentioned, it's a piece of shit. It is ineptly made. The action and, 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 and all that stuff is horribly done. It's a terrible script with terrible performances. So it's par for the course. It's a Michael Bay movie. And, of course, being a Michael Bay movie, it's almost two hours and 20 minutes long. Yeah. Because he, not only is he a fucking shithead, not only is he an egotist and a terrible filmmaker, but he makes really, really unnecessarily long movies. Like, his movies are fucking painfully long. As I mentioned, Bad Boys uh, Part 2, two hours and 37 minutes long. The Transformer movies are all well over two hours. Uh, Pearl Harbor, three hours. This guy thinks, oh, I'm the greatest filmmaker on the, on the planet. I can make movies. I can make people sit through shit movies for three hours. No. Fuck you. So, Michael Bay is a piece of shit, like his movies. Michael Bay movies. Yes. So, his latest is Ambulance. It's garbage. Okay? If you want to see it, you know, you listen. Here's the deal. If you're, if you're going to go see Ambulance, stop. Don't. You know, you got $15 you, that you just want to throw away. You know what? Donate it to Patreon. Do that on my Patreon page. We, you'll, you'll get much better entertainment, trust me. My videos, and my especially the bonus videos that I do, much more entertaining than anything Michael Bay can do. And, and you know what? The direction is better. This is better. Oh, 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 I've just made a better movie right there than Michael Bay. Just by doing that. My That right there, what I did? This. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. That's better than a Michael Bay movie. Mm -hmm. So donate your $15 that you would have spent on Ambulance to Patreon at patreon.com slash Show. Much better way you spend your $15. Anyway, Michael Bay sucks. <laughs>